Hi, everyone. Wayne Eckerson here. And I've got with me Sherard Varshney, CEO of Oval Edge, a company that literally was the first to market with a end-to-end -end data governance platform. Sherard, welcome to the show. Thank you, Wayne. Glad to be here. Great. So first question for you, why did you start Oval Edge? And how did you come up with this idea for an end-to-end -end data governance platform? So frankly, when um, I was uh, working with Hot and Worse Cloud Era, and uh, at that time, people were trying to put all the data at one platform. Uh, that was at that time, it's Hadoop. It was hard. It was difficult to put all the data at one platform. So the idea came up that why we need to put all the data at one platform, and a lot of governance needs was there, so we can keep it virtually. We can keep all the metadata at one place, so we can keep uh, the, the, at that time, the, we, we used to call it data catalog. And so it's kind of a foundation for becoming a data governance platform. And then when the customers started asking for more and more use cases, that becomes a data governance platform overall. So it's just a customer's need, which basically have matured it to the becoming a data governance platform. It so it started out as a catalog more or less for Hadoop type, big data type stuff yes. and has more into supporting a lot of other functions and features that are related. That's yeah, so, true. We at this, data so at this point, what would you say are the biggest differentiators of your product? Okay, so one of the biggest differentiators we have is that we are end-to-end -end data governance platform. This everything is integrated in one. So for example, you have the data literacy program, which is the business glossary the data lineage, which is like a very comprehensive data lineage is built in. The data quality module uh, is built in. So all the modules which is need for running an entire data governance program is built in in the one platform. So generally we call it like three pillars, uh, data literacy, data quality, and data access management. Access management also include privacy compliance part into it. So that's where the, the it's, a, it's a comprehensive solution uh, built around it. That's one of the major differentiators. So are these modules that people can implement if they want, but not if they don't? That's true. It means you can implement one at a time. Generally, people start with, the, you know, of course, you start with the foundation with data catalog. Then people do uh, privacy compliance, access management. Sometimes people do only the business glossary implementation. They do not do access management. Then they move to data quality. So that's how the companies start. Some people start with data quality and then they move to business glossary. So it, it depends upon where do we start and then move forward. Ultimately, you have to do everything. Otherwise, uh, single siloed right. governance does not right. make sense. Is there one module that you think stands above the rest in terms of innovation? Yes. So the one thing is that um, because of our foundational pillar of data lineage, uh, because we have this foundation of the data lineage, our business glossary module is uh, really like uh, one of the prime, like I would say the most selling um, solution because the lineage allow us to build this business glossary, uh, allow us to go to the downstream impact analysis, upstream impact analysis, understand where the data is coming, where it is going. So the building the business glossary becomes a, a, a much more easier for us to kind of give it to the data governance team and then they can build a business glossary, they can implement business glossary um, and, and it's a comprehensive solution in that area. So how does that, how, I'm trying to understand the connection between lineage and the glossary. Uh, is it because you have all this upstream and downstream information, you can pre-populate what the terms are that need to be defined by the business in the glossary? Is that how it works? Yes. So what it happens that in any, in any organization, countries will generally come up with the you know, acquisition and merger. Any a large organization, even the mid-sized organization have multiple companies built in. They have, they have the same KPIs or metrics have in different departments, use different languages, different definitions. So what we right. have is that we, since we catalog all the data, we have the lineage. So we understand where the data come from, where exactly it is. We understand the impact analysis. 
So for example, if you want to build a business closely with customer lifetime value, you can kind of put together this, you can see which different companies, where the data is coming. So you can put everything together, their users, everything come at one platform. We have a little bit of AI into it, a little bit of advanced algorithms. You put all the information in front of their data governance committee meetings. So they can kind of put together, design, think around it, what should be the right definition, what should be changed, where should we change it. So that discussion becomes much more fruitful and engaging, and that basically brings down to to building the business glossy and then implementing and then operationalizing it all the way to the, um, um, so that you can operationalize it. it easily as well. Got it. So you do all the heavy lifting research to find out what's out there. If there's three definitions of customer lifetime value, you'll, you'll find them and also understand what data they're drawing from and, and yes. what things they're pushing. Yeah, what, to, is, what right? is the formula so, used there? What is the formula used? How to, what is the actual definition? What is the actual formula is using so that the people who are building the definition, they understand the actual formula rather than just, uh, you know, uh, oh, this is last five years of this, but they can see the, how much data is, data is seven years with this five years. So you populate the glossary with all this research information. Here are the three instances of customer lifetime value in your organization. And here's how they define it. Here's where they're pulling from, where they're pushing to. Yes. And that makes it so much easier for a group to get together and quickly resolve, you know, what, what they should call and define as like customer lifetime value. Yes. Yeah, I can see why that's very popular. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so last question, what type of customer would you say is ideal for Oval Edge? So you know, Oval which, what type of customers really gravitate to your solution? So most of the time, uh, the mostly financial organization and healthcare, those are the two major industries, FinTech and healthcare organizations are two uh, primarily industries which is looking for it, but does not mean the utilities, the government and, uh, you know, the retail, uh, other companies are also uh, trying to uh, implement uh, overledge as well. So we have, a, uh, again, all variety of the horizontal, but I will say the more gravitas towards financial healthcare and, and mostly that we have seen a lot of tech companies as well. A lot of tech companies are implementing data governance uh, uh, as well. So those are the, the, the areas of the industries. Right. And mostly we see that um, uh, the large organizations are the one who's implementing data governance because they have like companies who grow merger and acquisition, they have complex problems uh, around the data. Those are the most of the time are really need. If you have a very small company and everything is uh, nicely sorted out, you don't really need need for data governance. Of course, everything is well sorted out. But even the company of 200, 300 people have these problems. Uh, we have seen we are seeing in our organization as well. But if you grow larger and larger, you need more and more uh, of these problems. Which need to so be it, it it sounds like large companies with uh, you know a, a lots of different fairly autonomous groups or divisions, uh, data silos that, that really, at this point, they really want to bring it all together, at least from a metadata perspective. That's true. Yeah, those are the very good customers to start data governance okay. program and bring things yeah, together. Yeah, so, so M&A, yeah, that's a rich target market for a product yes. like yours. Great. Well, listen, Sherard, thank you very much for this quick overview of Oval Edge, uh, and we'll see you in the future. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Have a good one.